Here's an idea. The recent resurgence of zombies is because of technology. So unless you've been in your bunker preparing for the zombie apocalypse, you've probably seen plenty of zombies recently. You know the type. Shambly walk, crony voice, very restricted diet. And for whatever reason, we can't seem to get enough of this gray undead horde. The Walking Dead, Left for Dead, Day of the Dead, 28 Days Later, Dawn of the Dead, Zombieland, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire, oh, wait, no. We're gonna talk about vampires later. So what is it about zombies that inspires the creation of dozens of new properties and their invasion into older properties? I mean, it's not exactly their looks or charm, which, I mean, I guess it never is, right? We've had cultural love affairs with all kinds of ugly monsters. And it's not because we love them or enjoy seeing them in the same way that we do with Superman or Batman or whatever superhero Ryan Reynolds and his chin are currently portraying. Besides the fact sometimes we just enjoy being a little scared, we tend to love monsters because they symbolize something in our real lives something we're not yeah. fond of. And in the movies, we get to see the protagonists defeat or live alongside of whatever terrible thing is causing them strife. We watch ourselves persevere in the face of extreme menace. And that feels kind of nice. For instance, in anti-communist McCarthy-era America, uber-popular science fiction films depicted in America under threat from alien invaders, some of whom looked just like us. After the bomb was dropped on Japan and they were dealing with fears of the nuclear age, Godzilla appeared to just ravage Tokyo. In the 70s, as Son of Sam, Ted Bundy, and the Zodiac Killer were making national news, slasher films featured unthinking, remorseless murderers. What is it then about us, and now, and zombies. Some critics say that George A. Romero's film specifically might symbolize the colossus of capitalism or the brainless, insatiable hunger of consumerism. But I don't think we, on the whole, are as afraid of consumer culture or class warfare as we are of, say, terrorism or the continued effects of economic collapse. Both of which, like zombies, are forces against which reason feels useless. There's no bargaining, and at a certain point, everybody's fate is just sealed. You can't erase terrorism, undo the effects of a crashed economy, or reverse the zombie apocalypse. The Horde is a symbol for a world beyond human control. Like the Tides or the Seasons or new Yui Bowl movies, there's nothing we can do to stop it. In the games and books and movies that feature zombies, we get to see ourselves suss out an existence in an evil, dangerous world that is literally trying to eat us alive. But I really don't think it stops here. They're present, but threats of bankruptcy and violence aren't exactly universal. And violence and economic collapse aren't the only forces out of our control in this crazy, topsy-turvy world of ours, are they? Not to mention, the stuff that's outside of our control might be scary, but that doesn't mean that it is necessarily evil. Zombies aren't evil. They have no ill will or malintent. They're just victims of circumstance. They're hungry and super dumb. They're basically just running a program. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Are zombies technology? To many people, technology marches forward seemingly completely disinterested in humanity. Media, ways of communicating, systems of commerce, all change regardless of what you want. The kids, they won't put down their damn iPhones and Apple just gets rid of ports that you were using and doesn't give a hoot no matter how much you tweet about it. Technophobia is a real thing, especially in times of great technological upheaval. Luddites, the pejorative term we use to describe people who are afraid of technology, were a real group of people in the 19th century who went around Around destroying machinery because it threatened their livelihood. And in this all internet, all email, mobile phone with you all the time times, I think it's safe to say that a lot of us feel a little threatened or pursued by technology. And what happens in so many zombie films? Survivors rely not on technology or infrastructure to save themselves, but rather simple or handmade machines or cricket bats. The classic zombie apocalypse survival plan is to go to an island where natural resources are plentiful. You get away from the zombies, but you also get away from technology and from everything. You return to a simpler time. Technology, like zombies, changes the way we think, what we do, our relationships. It changes everything. Now, am I saying that technology is bad and scary? No, I'm just saying that zombies and other monsters, for that matter, can symbolize the scary parts of good things just as well as they can the scary parts of scary things. And do I think the zombie fat is gonna last forever? No, times change, and the horrors that we put in our movies change with them. Vampires once signified a menacing other. You might have spoken to them or tried to reason with them, but their central purpose, even whim, was the complete destruction of our way of life. They were amongst us, just waiting to strike. Today, after the Cold War, vampires are 
well, different. They've gone from crafty, terrifying villain to creature-seeking human companionship and integration. And this kind of thing is already starting to happen to zombies. After an ambivalent, justiceless world and its progress leaving us behind is no longer scary, zombies become things like pets and love interests. So we move on to the next scary thing. So what will that be? Biotechnology? The availability of information? The diminishing sanctity of personal privacy? And what will be the baddie that embodies it? Keeping in mind, of course, that Sharktopus is already taken. What do you guys think? Do zombies represent technology? And what monster will we be obsessed with after them? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to join the Idea Channel horde, you know what to do. Last week's comments were better than a chapbook of Vogon poetry, though I guess that's not really saying that much. Let's see what you guys had to say about the universe as a computer. Slayer Fail and Daniel Hope point out some of the more interesting characteristics of the simulation argument, which says if the universe is a computer, then we should be able to make a simulation like ours. And if we can't, then... We're in trouble. Sam Bargeron recasts last week's question to ask whether or not computers are universes. I think this is really interesting. Poetically, it's maybe an easy argument to make. It really makes me wonder what a dualist like uh, Levi Strauss would think. As far as actual universes, I think maybe up in the air, a little up in the air. Gigi Facepalm points out that if the universe is a computer, then math must be an objective part of the universe, referencing our episode from two weeks ago. I want to know what you guys think about this one. Do you think that those two things are that related? Let us know in the comments. I think this is this is really great. Two mega DBZ BT3, and it will probably take a while. Desperado Z51 points out some of the ramifications regarding free will. Um, if you believe that the universe is a computer, um, do you do you really have it? Does it exist? Uh, this is really this is a good one. To Joshua Moore, maybe you should stretch it more. I don't know. Maybe by watching Vsauce's How Do You Know video. Too excited by the unknown and everybody else, say it with me now, Jife. The Weapons Hold points out that we do, in fact, know why the Bowl of Petunias thought, oh no, not again, and Graham Christensen drives it home with the explanation. Spoilers. This week's episode was brought to you by the clicky fingers of these talented individuals, and the tweet of the week comes from Leah Gates, who points us towards a Tech Dirt article about a lawsuit filed against Warner Chapel Music in the hopes of getting happy birthday in the public domain. Very exciting news. And one additional news item, Geek and Sundry Vlogs is currently having an open call for 10 vloggers. So if you or someone you know is an awesome geeky vlogger, you should nominate them or yourself. We will put a link in the description. Check it out. It's going to be really cool.